Hello and greetings. On this video, I'll show how to install OnlyOffice on a Ubuntu 16.04 and using Docker. Let me show you what I got over here. So I created a document, a step-by-step, -step how to set this up using, uh, you know, OnlyOffice uh, server. You can see it running locally on, on my network. Um, so that way you can see I practice where I preach. So let me put this aside and let's go ahead and jump right in. I, I have a fresh copy of a Ubuntu server running. So let me run this over here and let me make this a little bit long. And what we're gonna do is work at SSH. Show you how you set this up. Uh, okay, that should be good, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is SSH over to my next Mac. Oops. At 192.168.1.131. Oops. Okay, let me log in. Okay, so we're logged in. Uh, sudo. Oops. Excuse me. Clear. Okay, so now what we're going to do is the very first thing we're going to do is uh, edit our source list. So I'm going to do sudo. I'm going to be using nano. Uh, you could v use vi or, or vim. It's whatever, whatever you want to use. But I'm going to be using nano. Source. Yeah. Now I'll put all the commands on on the descriptions, but um, I'll try to zoom through some of this. So I'm just gonna comment this out and it's gonna be Docker. Docker. Uh, Docker project. And this is the actual link. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, so once that's saved, import the key. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and import the key. And now we're gonna also bring over the, the actual certs. Okay, so now that the certs are in, now we're gonna do a let me clear this so it's not so cluttered. We're going to do a sudo app-get update. And we're going to let this update. Okay, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and clear this. And we're going to do a sudo app-get install. And we're going to install the Docker engine. Docker, oops, dash engine. Hit enter, hit yes to this, and let it install. Okay, once that installs, let me go ahead and clear this. Now let's check if uh, if this is running and what version. So how we check what version of Docker we're running. We're gonna do Docker dash v as in victor now if you get a, a docker uh, version and so forth that means it's running and we're going to go ahead and just verify that by running and let me make this a little bigger clear how you actually verify that it would be system control or ctl uh, status oops and then what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for the Docker. And here you can see it's a bunch of burbish. What you're looking for is this active. Okay, that tells you that it's running. To get out of this, all you do is uh, hit the Q on your keyboard and that will exit it. Okay, let me clear this. Now, once we got that, now we're gonna go ahead and create a bridge. Oh, excuse me, uh, we have to actually set 
this up to start up docker to start up when the machine boots up sudo uh, system control enable and then we want to enable the docker Oops. okay so at this point docker is going to reboot when the machine reboots okay let me clear this so we're not so cluttered and now I'm going to create a, a Docker network. Now, on the Docker network, what I normally like to do is name the bridge what containers can be linked to. That way, I keep track of them. So how you do this is sudo docker oops, and then we're going to create And create a drive, excuse me, driver, excuse me, a bridge. And then the name of whatever your bridge is going to be named. So you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to be not name it only office. Hit enter. And you can see now it gave us our identification. Okay, let me get, go ahead and clear this. If you don't get your identification, something's wrong. A lot of times, maybe Apache was pre preloaded on it, or some something, something, something's not jiving there. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually uh, install the document server. And for that, since it's long, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it. So let me drag this a little bit further up. You'll notice that it, it ends with a backslash. That tells it is that's the end. The name that we're gonna be looking for is the name server. We're gonna hit enter. And now you can see we're greeted by basically like a more than or, or less than sign. Now we're gonna go ahead and start entering what is it that, where all this is gonna be linked from. And two at the same time. So it's going to be coming from here uh, to there. So backslash, you can see it ends with backslash. When I hit enter, it's going to give us another line. Do the same thing. And I'll put this on, I'll put all these commands on the, on the description. Hit enter. And then what are, what are we loading? Well, we're going to be loading the only office and it's going to be the document server. Hit enter. And if it cannot find it, which that's going to be typical for a new install, it's going to go out to the internet and it's going to download everything. Once it downloads and it extracts it, then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so once it finishes downloading, you'll notice that it'll say download a uh, new image and so forth. As long as you don't have any errors, move forward. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Then now what we're going to do is actually install the mail server. Oops. And same thing, I'm just going to copy it over. Um, again, um, I'll have the descriptions on, on here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to be installing the mail server here. So you notice that it ends with it. backslash. We're going to hit enter. And again, we're greeted by the more than or less than sign. And now at this point, since we're dealing with the mail server, we're, we're actually going to tell it what uh, ports you're going to need. Okay, so we're, I'm just going to paste that over. Now, if you use different ports, this is the time to change them. But if, if you have the default, well, this normally works good. Um, then enter here. It enter, remember, at the end, it ends with a backslash. So what's next here now is going to be what the full qualified name is going to be to this unit. So for me, it's just for testing, so it's going to be dash H. And this is going to be uh, only office dot local dot net. How about that? That's cool. So then... 
Now, don't forget, don't forget to put the backslash. This is a mistake that happens a lot. The backslash tells it that you're still running. If you do not put a backslash, it's like if you hit enter, or I mean, or you execute. You'll notice that I still have a more than or, or the less than sign. Now it's going to be the, the final, which is only office forward slash mail server. Okay, then hit enter. At the same time, you'll notice that it, is, it can't find it. So what it's going to do, it's going to go out to the internet and retrieve everything. Now you can see here, once it actually installs and pulls, then you'll get a download complete. So let me clear this. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the actual community server. Okay, hit enter. And you'll notice that I get the more than or less than sign. Again, I'm gonna tell it what ports I'm gonna use. Okay. And then again, the very last part, you'll notice that it'll be basically no backslash. So only office, what is going to be the community server? Hit enter. Again, it's not going to find it. So it's going to go out and it's going to pull it from the internet. Okay, so once it installs completely, you'll notice that everything is going to come up with no errors. So let's go ahead and clear this. Now the next thing is, one thing that only Office does do, it, it is a memory hog. So what I recommend is actually to create a swap. So um, you can use four gigs, whatever you want. Uh, um, let's do eight. Well, yeah, that's that's fine. Then you're going to go ahead and chmod. So the swap can actually have privileges. Then we're going to go ahead and format this thing. There it is, format it. And we're going to go ahead and enter a label too. Oh, excuse me, enable. At a moment. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is actually zoom out. Let me bring over a browser. And let, let me drag it over. Okay, and we're gonna enter the IP address 192.168.1.131 or whatever your IP is. And here it is. So we're first going to be greeted. Let me start. Let me zoom in. And you can see it's ready to get registered. So you're going to go ahead and enter um, whatever password. It obviously tells you six character minimum. It's pretty polished on that side. Um, so let me go ahead and enter my password. Once you click on next, let me go ahead and zoom out. Then at that point, you'll notice that this is the, your GUI and you're logged in as administrator right here. Okay. Uh, you could either hit the gear or if you want to go to documents and so forth. Um, it does, it, it's pretty easy once you get the, the hang of it. You could also link your, your own cloud or your next cloud from here. I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Um, and folders and so forth. So hopefully it made sense, you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one. Again, all that good jazz, subscribe, thumbs up, and thanks a lot.